Hello, beautiful people. This is The Book Chat. You may be listening to me over on the podcast audibly, or you may be watching me over here on YouTube where you can actually see me. So if you're listening to me on the podcast and you're like, hey, I want to see some, I want to see your face, then you want to go over to my YouTube channel, which will be in the link, which the link will be in the description or the show notes of the podcast. All right. So hello. Um, this next book, I want to give some backdrop, some context for the content I'm about to share, right? Because um, what I realized in wanting to share this book was that I don't know what this was about, but here we go. I realized before I started to share this book that um, I was like, Sierra, you don't want to get on and give this thought, like give this book, like this book review as something um, that you've always believed. I, I don't know if that was the, thought, the exact thought process. It was more so of, I don't want to get on and give off this perception that I've always believed what this book is about or that it's, it's always been true for me. That's it. I did not want to get on here and give y'all the perception that when I read this book, the four times or five times, four or five times that I've read it, that I believed it when I read it or that I even thought that it was true for me. So the name of this book is Together. I mean, you already know if you looked, <laughs> looked at the title of it, but here we are. Um, Together is Better by Simon Sinek. It is a little book of inspiration and it literally is a little book. It is 140 pages. And, and when you heard me say I've read it four times, you may have been like, this girl said she read this book four times. It must be that good. Well, it is that good, I will say. However, I read it four times for the sake of I needed to digest this because your girl was out here doing relationships all kinds of ways, okay? Um, and I did not know that I needed. I'm gonna, I'm, so y'all, I'm gonna start anyways that's not what we're here for um I did not always have this great way of doing relationships and if I'm quite transparent here I still am struggling through this and I mm, I am still learning to use the tools that I have in my toolbox is what I would say um is it a struggle no it's just that it's taking time I'm in a process and it's taking time for me to learn how to use new tools and learn how to embrace where I really am. And that is my flowers that y'all can see. Hold on, there we go. Um, to embrace where I really am. And so um, the backdrop that I want to give you is that I have had some amazing relationships that have come and that have gone. And I did not always believe that together was better. I did not always think that I would have my kiddos are up. It is their playtime. So if you hear screaming kids, they are playing, they are fine. Um, where was I? So for the most part, I um, did not always have the mindset to be able to tackle relationships in my life. I did not always have the um, tools in my tool belt to learn and do life with other people. And so what I did back in, I want to say maybe it was 20, I don't remember. I will say it was 20 something, 20 something, 2018, 2019, 2020. I went through a season in my life where I realized I was like, I need to put some relational stuff in my toolbox because you're going to need relationships for this big dream that you have. Not just big dreams, but like, for the spaces that you want to be in Sierra. So you're going to need people. This isn't something that you can just tackle by yourself. I know you've believed for many years, Sierra, that you could just do amazing things and that um, you could just do them by yourself. And so um, I had this mindset for several years that I can do it. And I am a achiever. And, be, and that means that I like to check off boxes. I like to um, see my progress. I I'm very introspective. I am a person who really likes to get things done, if I'm honest, and more than one thing at, at a time. And I just quite recently learned that I am a ball of energy. And so I literally need to have a space to put this energy into and um, not go to bed full of energy because then I won't go to sleep. 
like if I need to empty all of what I have, all of the energy that I wake up with by the end of the day, whether that is me going for a walk, whether that is me dancing, whether that is me running around with my kiddos, whether that is me being creative and doing several projects at one time, I need my energy to be empty by the time I go to bed. That's how I go to sleep. And that is how I get great risk. And that is how I am designed. And so um, with this new awareness, I was like, ah, oh, hmm. So I had to like, me saying I have had some relationships that just did not last is because I was not aware that that was me. And so there would be times where I would end relationships prematurely, or I would um, be in relationships and feel like, oh man, this may not work out because these people are not like me listen, your girl that made a lot of mistakes in relationships. Okay. And I just want to be transparent and share with you that I have not always believed that together was better because I was unaware of some parts of myself and it hurt y'all. Like it hurt. It, it was, it was not an experience that I want to sh- like, it's not an experience that I want to continue to dwell on, but it was an experience I was able to go back and say, okay, Sierra, what can you learn from this? What do you carry over into your new relationships? What do you change about the relationships you currently have? And so um, I, I will say together is better today. I can say together is better today on this hour. And, and I truly believe that um, together is better and it keeps getting better and better every single time I meet someone new. Um, and that that is my thought process. And I am looking forward to the relationships that I get to encounter and people that come in my life now that I'm like, oh my goodness, like I, I, I am more willing to like talk about things now. I am more willing to share and be vulnerable. And when I'm, you know, and um, it's, it's just different. And it's different because I have a new awareness um, and not just a new awareness. I'm actually embracing the new awareness. I'm actually doing something with the new awareness and I'm actually aware. How do I say that? I'm actually um, bringing this awareness to other people. Um, and it's been benefiting in the relationships that I now have. Um, and that I, and, and even not to say that since I've gotten to this space, some people have been with me through that transition of learning myself. And learning this, I didn't always have this awareness. Um, and that's something I think that, and I want to just say this before I go into the book. Um, you want to go back to this week's episode. I did an episode on Tuesday that is amazing. It is very transparent, um, very vulnerable. You can go and listen to that episode and it'll give you some context for what I'm sharing here. This is just snippets of that. But I will say that it, the journey, there are people who have journeyed with me through that awareness. And I'm so grateful for them, like so grateful. They are golden because like, like golden because it ain't, it's, it's not easy to journey with people through their transitions. And I now have more grace for people who are in transition. I do have more grace for myself, for, for people who are transitioning with other people, because it's a whole, it's, it's a thing. It's not something like we are all going to be going through transitions. We are all going to like go from one space to the next space. And just like when I went to the nail shop this past week, I realized that I got two different, like the lady who did my pedicure was not the same lady who did my overlay on my nails. And that everybody just, just, just listen to this because I just think, think of things like this. Clearly these two women have two different skill sets. One lady's skill set is to do um, pedicures to get, you know, the dead skin off your feet, to get, to um, do your cuticles on your feet, to um, massage your legs and your feet with the, with the scrub and, you know, polish your toes. Like that's one set of skills, but there's another set of skills that the lady who does your nails has, there's a piece of glitter on my face. There's another skill set that the lady with the who does your nails has where she is like dipping her paintbrush into, and I call it a paintbrush because it looks similar to a paintbrush to me. She's dipping her paintbrush into a, like some acrylic and using that to overlay on top of your nails, which is not the same skill that it is to do your pedicure. And I, and I, and I like, right before I started this, I was like re- recording this. I was like, oh my goodness, that is really good. 
and I want to share it. What I mean by that is like when we're going from different spaces in that transition together is better. And it, and you just have to find your people, but or, or allow your people to find you. But that space of transition and where was I going with this example? Um, those two skill sets, here I am. Thank you. Those two skill sets are, they were probably learned in two different environments. You're dealing with people's feet and you're dealing with people's hands. That's, listen, I don't want to deal with nobody's feet. I'm be honest. I don't want to deal with nobody's feet. So um, when it comes to, <laughs> when it comes to the two different skill sets, so let me stay focused so we can talk about the book, but it's going to make sense. When you're dealing with two different skill sets, sometimes you're learning one set of skills and one type of environment and they translate. And just because you have the skills or just because you've learned something doesn't mean you know how to use them. You may actually learn how, you may actually have a set, like some knowledge about something, but then when it comes to putting that knowledge into putting that knowledge into like to work, you may find out like, oh, I was doing feet and now I am doing hands. Whoa, 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 whoa. This doesn't translate. I put acrylic on your toes and it doesn't, you know, because I mean, our feet, our toenails are bigger than our fingernails. Like that big toe is not the same size as your thumb. You see what I'm saying? Like, so that set of skills may not relate over to me doing an overlay on your nails. And you could quickly find this out I feel like that that analogy just went all kinds of ways. The point I was making is that sometimes you may have a knowledge of how to do something. You know how to do nails. And that is the overall arching theme. And then doing feet is one set of nails and doing fingernails on hands is another set of nails. And just because you have one doesn't mean that it translates. And so for me, when I'm saying that together is better for me and my relationships, what I found is just because I had um, relational awareness or relational intelligence I don't know what the word would be for that in one set of like in like a church setting inside of like communities that were based online inside of um different other groups that I was a part of in my community doesn't mean it didn't translate for me it did not translate because I often was the leader in some of these groups I often was the more uh, more um outspoken po outspoken person and so turning turning to being more um, linear with the people and walking alongside them um, and um, not having to go all the way deep with people because some of the relationships that I had like in these communities and stuff we would just go deep and learning to be on like because for a long time small talk used to annoy me but like learning that some people are just at the space of small talk and I can choose that if I want to do relationships with them or I can realize or, or I can accept that small talk is where this person is. That doesn't mean that that's a reflection of you, Sierra. So there were so many things that I learned um, and I am still learning in my relationships and how to relate to other people. Um, and for years, I didn't talk for years. Believe it or not, I didn't talk. Like, I know that may be hard to believe because I love like you see me on my podcast, you hear me on YouTube, but for some years I didn't talk I journaled a lot and that was where I felt the safest and so um learning to relate to a lot of learning to relate to people relationally relationally has been a journey for me um and it still is a journey but I know that I deserve amazing people in my life and like I said I have some amazing people in my life but I know that there's going to be more people that come in my life just simply because I am I'm just great like and not just, just because I'm just great, but it's like, I desire that, you know? Like I desire to have people in my life that are um, walking in their purpose and that are, um, that believe too that together is better. Um, so that is gonna be the segue that I take into today's book. Together is better. The first quote that I wanna share with you from this book, let me take the sleeve off. My, I don't know if I said this already, but my kiddos are having playtime and mama is recording. So if you hear them, you know, just, just count it as mama is doing what mama got to do to get us, get it done. So page 37, we say what, when we say out loud, what we don't know, it increases the likelihood that someone who does know will offer help and look at the beautiful picture. <laughs> Listen, when you say out loud what you don't know, 
somebody, somebody, somebody has the answer. There's a walking answer, a walking answer waiting on you to say, hey, I don't know how to do this. I don't know where, I know, I, I, I'm not aware of this or like, I'm not even going to keep expanding it. I'm going to just leave it at that. There, your answer is going to come through someone or it's going to come through something and come to you. Um, but you have to say it out loud and, and, and or voice it like, hey, I don't really know how to do this or I'm not really great at this or I would like some assistant, um, assistance at this because for me, I'm still out here attempting to do this YouTube thing and I am doing it, but I, there's a lot of stuff I don't know. Um, I don't know how to do, like I've tried it before, but I don't know how to add all of the, 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 the like the, what do you call that stuff? I don't even know what it's called, but all the different features that people add into the, like the words at the bottom, like the pictures, like my, my YouTube link is going to be here. Like, I don't know how to do any of that, but here I am doing it. You see what I'm saying? Like I'm doing what I do know how to do. And then um, the other thing is like, even as I venture into building a business and being an entrepreneur, I don't know how to do all of this stuff. I, I clearly, I pulled back from some stuff because I was like, I really don't know what I'm doing. And it was super uncomfortable for me to continue to um, venture into that. I was like, wait on your people, Sierra. Your people will come. And so here I am waiting on my people. Um, here I am talking about my people. Um, like together is better, okay? So that is number one. Um, number, number two, what good is an idea if it remains an idea? Experiment, iterate, fail, try again, change the world. So a part of this journey that I'm on requires me to do that. And so here is the picture on that page of that. Those are those words. Um, what I took from this quote from this book is that what is what what good is it to just have an idea in your mind? What good is it to just leave it there? Do something with it. Try, experiment with it. Iterate. Like if you had to have five or six iterations, like this book chat, this is like my third, I want to say this is my third time at this book chat idea because I, I love to read and I know that I can do this for the rest of my life. Like talk about books that I'm reading because I plan to be reading even when I'm old old, old, like 101 years old, I plan to still be reading books um, because I just think that learning is just amazing. But I want to show you, um, I want to, that goes to the next one. That is, I want to show you something that I saw in the book that I was like, okay, um, what good is an idea if it remains an idea? Try experiment, intermit. all right. So this is not the page, but I want to um, I want to share this. This is not the quote that is on this page, so I'll cover this quote. But I want to show y'all this. I don't know if it's going to work, but this page reminds me of that. What good is an idea if it remains an idea? Try so the this wall. Ooh, y'all. This wall, there we go, reminded me, like, what good is an idea? So what I mean by that, like, the wall to me represented that you're staring at the brick wall, and that's the idea that you have, and you're doing nothing with it. Like, like if you're watching me, I, I know, because if you've been watching my journey this long and all the, the things that have been coming through my channel, then I will say to you, Sir, woman, <laughs> whoever you are, you have an amazing idea to do something. What good is the idea if it remains just an idea? Try it, experiment with it, iterate, fail, try again, change the world. Like you have an idea. If you go back on my YouTube channel, you will see that I started this YouTube channel. I don't remember what year, but you can go back on my channel, you will see it. But it's like, I had an idea. And I'm trying it. I'm re I'm doing it again. I failed at it. I'm trying again. And at some, at some capacity, because my words are out, because you see my face, because I'm trying again, I am changing the world. Like some of the ideas that I put out 
people who have watched it, I've changed their world. So even though you may not be doing it on like a magnanimous scale or, you know, everybody doesn't know who you are, that's okay. Everybody won't know who you are. And what I mean by that is like, there's so many people in this world, so many billions and trillions of people. That's, that, that's not the end goal is for everyone to know you. But for you, it will be fulfilling to you, which I will tell you, um, that's my next one. It'll be fulfilling for you. So here's what it is. Excitement comes from the achievement. Let me go to the page. Excitement comes from the achievement. Fulfillment comes from the journey that got you there. So we see people that we believe to be successful. And oftentimes, most people's most people, when you say successful, people think of celebrities. Like that's probably the first thing that most people think of is a celebrity. Like most people will think of, for women, it may be Beyonce. For women, it may be um, Rihanna. For women, it could be anybody. But I think most people know who Beyonce is. And so I'll use her for an example, but it's like, I'm sure her fulfillment came from the journey. If we were to ask her that question, I'm sure. If you were to ask Oprah, I'm sure that the fulfillment that came, the fulfillment that they have came from the journey to get into where they are now. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm just that confident in that, that excitement comes from the achievement. Like you're excited. Like Beyonce is probably excited that she gets to be herself and embody this woman that she is and share it with the world. But fulfillment, like her feeling fulfilled comes from the journey that got her there. I, I just, I just bet on it. I just bet on it. I bet on it that if we were to ask Beyonce, hey, how, where did your fulfillment come from in this process? Like, how do you, what gives you fulfillment? I'm sure, I'm just sure, I bet you my last time <laughs> that she would say that it came from her journey to get into where she is um, versus, you know, this other part. This, this was another one that I was going to share, but fulfillment is not born of the dream. Fulfillment is born of the journey. So it's the same way of saying the same thing. So like, journey there beautiful journey there sir handsome like take the journey to get in there like the fulfillment is going to be from the journey that gets you to where you desire to go and that can be any journey it doesn't have to be um being an entrepreneur it doesn't it can be your whatever your journey is and what i mean by that your journey may be for a male it could be that you want to be buff and you want to have you know these muscles and six pack or it could be i just want to feel good in my body. I just want to feel confident when I walk into a, a group of men. Or for women, it could be the same thing. I want to I want to be more lean. I want to, you know, for me, it's been my skin and I am doing amazing with this process and eventually I will share it. But like, it could be something, something like, you know, um, with your skin, it could be um, you want to have a house. Like success for everybody is going to be different. But I will say that the fulfillment is coming because of fulfillment is born of the dream is not born of the dream excuse me fulfillment is not born of the dream but fulfillment is born of the journey that you, the journey to get you there okay um like you'll like I look back and I look back at my old YouTube videos and I'm like wow like I remember recording that video the very first video my skin was actually broken out at the time and I would I had just gotten to like a like a minor accident that morning and I just was stretching out on the limb. It was like, hey, here I am. And this is what I have to share. And I want to create this group. Like, and and, and it's, it's funny when I look back, but it's beautiful to look back at myself and see like, man, you've journeyed to here, Sierra. Like you've journeyed to this space here. I wasn't even in my own space back then, like in like my own home back then when I was doing those YouTube videos. So like, it, it just reminds me like we can, we can create some beautiful things when we make up our mind about what it is that we want to create. Because I, I, I had not even had my mind made up about that, but I got a couple of videos out. I think I had like, um, motivation Monday, momentum Monday, um, with wisdom. I don't remember motivation Monday was one of them. I know that. Um, and I, I really enjoyed it. And that's where I found out, like, I love to be on camera. I love to express myself in this way. And I didn't know it at the time that I did. Um, but <clears throat> this one goes to my next one. 
always plan for the fact that no plan ever goes according to plan. So let me find that in the book. Always plan for it not to work out. And this is the picture that they did for this one. Like, and this is, this is the, like the obstacle, if you will, of whatever the thing is always. And they are in the woods and it's like this. Yeah. So plan for it not to go the way you want to. Life started happening for me in the sense of my relationship with my husband. It was just not, it, it was not in a good space. And so then I start recording and stop doing YouTube videos. And I didn't plan for that. I can think of so many things that I, I plan to cook certain things for dinner and don't have, and, and did not have butter for it. Or I plan to make a peanut butter jelly sandwich and did not plan, like I didn't plan it out that, okay, when you put this peanut butter on this bread, you may actually need to warm it up so it gets a little softer to put on this bread so that it don't tear up your bread. Like plan for things not to go the way that you want them to go. And I think like I was a part of, at the top of 2021, I was in this, um, a part of this um, workshop was called Design Your Life. And the woman got us to do something that has been so transformative for me. She got us to backwards plan. And one of the things that she said, and she was just like, this is going to be the part that you need to show up for that. Like you can show, like you can catch the replays for this other stuff. But for this, I need you to show up to the live and I need you to actually do it because this is the part that of all the things in all the days that you've been a part of this, this is the day that counts the most. And what she, what she had us to do was plan for obstacles. And that was not something I had ever, to be honest, I am a resilient person, but to plan for, to plan to be resilient is not something that I, I had, like, I didn't, my mind just didn't think of it like that. And so I was like, oh, okay. She got something here. And so I think it's, a, and I want to say I shared it with like two other people. It's like, hey, this is like shared like the workshop with two other people. Cause I was like, hey, this has been amazingly transformative for me to plan for like, even now, like I'm doing a couple of things and like recording this video for some things that I have planned ahead. It's like, hey, Sierra, you should play in for things that not go well. So oftentimes like I am doing videos more than one time or I am recording my podcast more than one time because I'll, I'll, I'll do the video or I'll do the recording. And I realized that, Hey, my kiddos are super loud. And that part of the video or that part of the audio is very, um, distracting because they are like so excited about whatever they're doing. So I plan for that. So now I have a mic that allows me to mute and I can go back and edit, like I can mute while they're doing what they're doing. And then I can go back and edit out where I muted and I pick back up where I started. And that is me planning for things to not go my way or not to go in, in sync with what I am trying to do. And so even for the book chat, like I planned out my books, but if things like I have another plan for that, for it to not, you know, like, let's just say life happens to where I like, I don't know something happens and I don't want to make a worst case scenarios, but something happens to where I cannot get on audio. I'll just do the podcast. I mean, can I get on video? I'll just do the podcast audio. People listen to like It's a podcast anyways. And so there's, there's lots of stuff that I have planned into my days and to my, um, into my life to where if this doesn't go, you know, the way that I want it to go, then I can just do this. And, and sometimes I'll be completely honest. I don't have it just oh, I don't have a plan B for everything, but I do have a mindset that will allow me to pivot for whatever the thing is. It's like, oh, you're not able to do the, you know, um, you're not able to bake the cake that you want to bake for the thing. No problem. We'll just go buy one or we'll just let the person know and let's see what they want to do. Like I'll, my mindset will quickly, that resiliency will quickly, quickly click in for me to be able to think of something alternative to do instead of the thing that was planned. And so that is the third thing that I share. I think I was on number three that I will share from this book. Always plan for the fact that no plan ever goes according to plan. Okay, so there's that. Um, let's see, I'm gonna share this from page 74. Temptation is what it says. What happens if we succeed, if we find the thing we're looking for, that perfect place, a place we feel safe, a place we feel trusted and trusting, a place we find happiness and wealth beyond our imagination. But what about all the people we left behind? 
and it's, it, it is, it's not like a big depiction of anything just you know showing you a place um I thought that this was beautiful I thought that this was beautiful and I picked this um to share because I realized I was like our definitions most people's definition of success is different than the other person and I know for myself as a person who does a lot of things just intuitively I know for myself as a person who doesn't need a lot because I do need some I'm not even gonna lie but I doesn't need a lot of people on board with me for whatever the thing that I'm doing or and 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 what I mean by that is like I often would just do the things I want to do, but I still will tell somebody and share it with somebody to hear some feedback from them. But I will be honest, most times I think about what about the people that I'm no longer in relationship with and we don't do life together anymore. And it's not to say that I'm leaving them behind, but it's like when I create, as I create this beautiful life that I want for myself and this amazing business that I would like and um, have the amount of freedom that I want in my life. I want people, you know, together is better. This is the name of the book. I want people to share it with. I don't want to be there alone. And I often think that if I move through the world, the way that I move and people see me as a person who is strong and people see me as a person who is resilient. And when I say strong, the average way that you think of the word strong is what I'm ta- I'm saying. But when people see that part of me, I think sometimes I'm like, what if that's the thing that will cause people to be left behind? Because I'm more than that. Um, and I am not, I, I do, I do allow myself to um, feel my feelings and be vulnerable, but it's in a safe space. And I am very slow to, share that with any and everyone right yeah so the temptation that I'm speaking of for me is that I want to feel safe in the spaces that I'm in and I take my time like I don't I I no longer rush to share and be vulnerable with people um I take my time because it's just how I move through life especially because I know my for my the face or like the poker face that I most often um, am viewed through is one that is, she's got it. She's got it. And I don't, I really don't. However, um, that is the way that I move through the world because I know that I can do anything I put my mind to. And um, the vulnerable pieces of me and the parts of me that are um, not so easily seen, people know about them. If you, if, if you were to talk to the two closest people that are close to me right now in my life, they will tell you she cries. They will tell you she feels. They will they will tell you that. But I often think that, like this says, what happens if I succeed and I find the thing I'm looking for, which is like freedom of my time. That's one of them, I will say, um, to decide when, where, and how I spend it. Um, and that's the perfect place for me a place that I feel safe, a place that I feel trusted and trusting, a place where I find happiness and wealth beyond my imagination. But what about the people that I leave behind or I left behind? And that that's something that I think about. Um, But the story, if you go in, if you grab this book, you'll find out like, it's like they shared this and this is on page 92. This is the thing that makes my heart feel great is that life is beautiful, not because of the things we see or the things we do. Life is beautiful because of the people that we meet. And so for me, I know that as I journey and as I have those thoughts and as it's like, I'll bring people along with me. Um, there's another part in here that it says, um, it is a luxury to put our interests first. It is an honor to put the interests of others before ourselves. So the, what I believe and how I navigate this is that once I create, as I create this life that I desire, and as I create this life that serves me first, it is so that I can have people alongside me. Like, I don't want to do this alone. Like I want, and, and, and I think, and I believe in my heart 
that I will, I will meet the people that are supposed to do this life with me. And I have met some of them already and that we will continue to cross paths and that we will do this life. And it will be, it, it will continue to get better and better and better and better and better, right? And so I get excited. Like I do think about people that are no longer in my life. I'm not even gonna lie. Like sometimes it hurts. Sometimes I tell my friends about people that I did life with, but then I think about it. I was like, it's okay. Like that's a part of the, like you, I don't know how long this journey will be. I don't know how long it'll take, um, you know, to get to the place that I truly desire. But as I journey, I realize like, it's a luxury to put my interests first, but it's an honor to put the interests of other people before myself. And that is the life that I will live. I will live a life of serving other people. I will live a life of giving. I will live a life to where, I will live a life of philanthropy. I will live a life of um, amazing, thriving, rich relationships. I think and, and I think in analogies most of the time. So I think of like eating a, I like burgers, like hamburgers, like give me a good old burger from five guys. Even though I prefer them to have a little bit more seasoning, the burgers are tremendous. And I think of relationships in that way. Like, how do you think of relationships like a burger sierra? Like want my <laughs> relationships to taste like an amazing burger right off of the grill. Nice, juicy everybody has a piece of lettuce everybody has a piece of onion everybody has a piece of tomato and I've, I even like their um the bur like late well the last one I had was lettuce wrapped and it was the bomb and I was like this ain't even this is good without the bread come through without the bread okay I like food but that's how I think of my relationships like some really good food whatever your favorite food is like I will live a life where my relationships taste like the best tasting food that you never that you'd never had. Okay. Now we might even not, we might not even like to eat the same types of food, but I will tell you that that's the that's the type of relationships that I will have. If your favorite food is banana pudding, my relationships gonna taste like that banana pudding. Add some pineapples, by the way. That's amazing. Let me get back focused. So another quote that I took from this book is. Working hard, this is page 105. This one is a little, this one is fun. This one is fun because I'm sharing a lot. Working hard for something we don't care about is called stress. Working hard for something we love is called passion. This one, I got to read it again. Let me read it again. Let me read it again. Working hard for something we don't care about is called stress. Working hard for something we love is called passion. And here's the picture. So listen, I do a lot of things to, in my, like I have a lot of things. My husband asked me this morning, like how do I get back to a better mind state? And I listed off a, a couple of things. And one of the things for me is, my, my top thing is music. I can find music for anything, literally. I can find music for a happy day, for a sad day, for a between day. Um, and that is one of the tools that I have in my toolbox for stress. And so when I read this quote, I was like, working hard for something I don't care about is stress. So if I don't care about it, I need to let it go. What, like, wait a minute. I was like, so you just like, I had to process this again. I was like, stress is when one of the definitions for stress is working towards something that you care nothing about. Just think about that. Stress is caused when we work towards something that we care nothing about. But passion is when you're working hard towards something that you love. So a way to eliminate stress is to do something, be a part of something, take, take be in community with something or someone or some people that you love. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I think I have one more I want to share, but that that was good for me to read because I was like, as we as I journey and I take on this this mindset that together is better, a part of that process, like I will start to journey. I may journey with some people who are working towards something that they care nothing about. I may be journeying with some people who care about who love, 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 love what they're doing, and I can I can glean from the passion that they have because they're not stressed. Like now, now there are, there is some things 
there are some things that may cause stress along this journey, even when you're doing stuff that you love, but it's just like a consistent, like a, like a really way for you to know, like, Hey, why am I feeling stressed? One of the questions that you can ask yourself is, do I care about this? Do I care? Do I care? So that is that quote. Working hard for something we don't care about is called stress. Working hard for something we love is called passion. Just that simple. Okay. Um. Let's see. I think I have one more. I think that's it. I think that's it. That's all I have written down. But I will say the book is beautiful. One of the other things I will share about this book that I love is that there's a page in here and I, I'm i like, man, I love this idea. There's a page, I'm gonna show it to you, that is infused with a secret scent, the smell of optimism to be exact. And you scratch this page in the book and it smells good. It smells good. I, 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 if I, I don't really know how to tell you what it smells like. I just smells like optimism. It's like a, it's like a powdery, like a powdery lavender. Optimistic smell. It, 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 and it, before you start to read the story, there's a page that they ask you to smell it and then you begin and it says start. It says start here. I just think that's cute. Um, that's something that I loved about the book. Another thing that I love about the book is that the pages, because this concept is so, it, it, it really is deep, but it's, but it's clear that the theme throughout the whole book is that together is better. There's a part in here where, um, so, so most all of the pictures are black and white and red. And like a little piece of red in each picture. In each picture, I love that. Um, th it, there's more stuff in here about leadership. I, I mean, for me, the things I picked up on were not all about leadership because, um, especially, there's one quote in here about how leadership is not about. Let me see if I can find it. Leadership is not about being the leader. It's about being a student. Like most leaders don't think of themselves as leaders; they think of themselves as students. And I was like, mm, I like that. Um, so there's there's lots of information in here about um, being a leader. However, I um, I what I gleaned were the things that I shared with you. Um, and I truly, truly want to say, like, I read this book. I don't know exactly where it is in there, but I read this book like five times, four to five times. And I know for myself that I my kids are just excited and they're having a good time. I um did not well I guess he's not excited I did not um together is better and I'm gonna end this on this note because my kiddos are needing me right now um however I hope that you have enjoyed this and that you will come back next week Mommy.